Well, the first idea was I, I planned to enter the Archibald Prize in 2005. And the Archibald Prize tends to be big heads on big canvases. And I thought I'd do a big canvas with a small head. So I noted down an idea for it. I didn't know who I'd do. And a couple of months later, or a couple of weeks later, I saw uh, Shane Maloney, you know, Mario's and Fitzroy. Uh, he approached me um, when I was having coffee one morning. We both went to this, you know, we both patronised the same coffee shop. Uh, and he, um, he said, uh, would you like to sit for a portrait? I was delighted to, to do so. Um, I guess it's somewhat flattering. I was interested in uh, the process about which I learned absolutely nothing. But, uh, it goes through various stages. You sort of refine the ideas you go, you, you make drawings, you change things and so on. This was the, the first idea for the, for the portrait, the, the big painting with a small head, but I hadn't, hadn't thought of a sitter at this point. And that was in, uh, in May uh, 2004. And met Shane Maloney in the meantime, so his, his name appears now on the, the, uh, the figure. Uh, but I haven't yet found the setting. The next month, no, the next week, I've got the setting uh, uh, based on an old drawing that I found, and Shane is sort of appearing in the in the uh, setting now, and the format sort of being worked out. It was a bit squarer than the um, the finished one. Um, here I did a small study uh, with myself as the portrait, just to try it out, a half size study. And there's the, uh, the layout for the finished uh, Shane Maloney one. And I think there's only one more. It was this one where the, where the tree appears and some architectural notes made. And that's pretty well it. And I probably just, just started working on the canvas, squared it up, did the golden moon over it and, uh, and started painting. He came out and I made a study of his head. Uh, normally I have five sittings for a portrait. That's, that's what I've found is, is, you know, works the best. And I always work from life for the head and hands. Uh, the clothing I photograph because it's boring painting shirts and things with the person sitting, it's just wasting their time basically. I tried out the setting first by doing a self-portrait in the setting. Um, I left the tree out just to see how it looked. But then I, I, I put the tree back in when I, I did the, the Maloney portrait. But uh, that's a half-size uh, version of the, of, the, of the painting, a study. There's no uh, sort of, you know, boxing in the dark. You know what you're doing all the time. But uh, yes, always from life and uh, about an hour and a half, two hours per sitting. And strangely enough, people seem to enjoy it. You get to spend uh, a pleasant hour in a turpentine-infused room having a bit of a chat, uh, and then in due course, uh, this portrait appears. It's a bit of a myth, that idea, the artist sees into the very soul of the person. I mean, if you can get a likeness, that's all you really want to do. If the likeness is good enough, something will come through of the person. Um, I think with, with the portrait of Peter Doherty, the, the, the character of the man came through. I mean, I wasn't trying to do anything, it just happened that way. The, the Shane Maloney and the Cosgrove picture are more uh, sort of paintings rather than portraits because they have some landscape or they have buildings or other figures. It's, it's more of, a, of a, a complicated business. And I found the setting for the painting in an old drawing I'd done in 2000 uh, of an alleyway in Melbourne called um, Highlander Place. It's a fictitious alleyway. Uh, it's not actually there in that configuration. But I knew where we were immediately, I could tell. Uh, my books are, are set um, in the sort of immediate past, usually about 10 years back from the, from the time of publication. And I'm often touching on aspects of the cityscape which have been transformed. Uh, uh, things happen at buildings which are no longer there. The, the building that looms on the left it's got a big plate glass, tinted plate glass window. So it's, um, it's a late Victorian building which has been um, modernised, modified. There's something going on there in the background. There's a, there's a figure in a shirt. Now, it could be a waiter, it could be an office. 
Right, no, so there's a question. The building on, on the right is probably pretty close to what was there, except I think I put in the, the underground car park. The, the flyover as it was, that, um, that bit of carved masonry comes from Flinders Street around the corner, and the rest of it I made up. It's like in a dream, I, I, I'll often use the same setting and things as if time has passed and something's gone and something's you know, stayed and remained. And uh, like there's all these links through the paintings of, 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 the, of the same objects that have uh, survived or not survived or whatever, you know. He had dealt with both me as a subject and um, my subject matter, which very often is the city, this city, Melbourne. For me, the particular things about this place uh, coincide with my particular interests. Uh, so uh, the politics, um, the way that the, the history is written in the built form, and I think that there's a limit to the social mobility here, that in Melbourne you find the same people have been to school together, been to university together, you know, practiced the professions together, and now they all sit on the you know, bench of the county court together, or whatever it may be. That, um, and that this means that the hidden patterns, the hidden connections, the, or not, not even hidden, just that there are many connections between people that are, um, uh, that are there, but they're not immediately visible. As a writer, looking at the way um, a, uh, the physical surroundings of the city can offer themselves as mood or as plot opportunities or scenarios and settings has been built into this. It wasn't my ugly mug, <laughs> which he had the good sense to make very small, <laughs> but it's it's in fact a portrait of my writing process, uh, which is really quite remarkable, I think. Well, I mean, naturally I was, I was disappointed when I realised I wouldn't be portrayed on a horse with epaulettes and a full set of medals and perhaps, you know, a hat with a feather in it. I had been hoping for that. but. <laughs>